I want to welcome you to our eighth session on talking about how to share Christ with others. We've talked about a lot of things deeply spiritual, from prayer to the role of the Holy Spirit. And then in our last session, we begin to talk about sharing your story, telling others what Christ has done for you. And uh, this is one of the greatest tools that you'll ever use. And I'm talking with Wayne Jenkins, a dear friend who grew up with me in Baton Rouge. Wayne, I, I wanna share something with you as we yeah. get into this. Uh, we both grew up in Baton Rouge, and I went back to Baton Rouge here recently and had a group of my high school friends come together. And one, one of them reminded me of something that whenever I graduated uh, from high school, I came to school during my senior year for exams, final exams, drunk. And uh, I came- Makes for a good exam. <laughs> right. So anyway, I came and, and the teacher said, Sammy, sit down and take your exam. And, and I took the test, I wadded it up and threw it at the teacher. It's a, it's, a, it's a miracle that I ever got out of high school. <laughs> but anyway, this friend of mine reminded me of that. And, uh, and, and I just think about, wow, you know, I can't believe, you know, that, that, but you know what? God changed me. That's right. And this guy went on to say, and then I watched Sammy, and I saw a change in his life. And he was giving my testimony for me. And, and that's really what people ought to see. People ought to be able to see there's something about you that's different. Than, than, you know, and, and, and the testimony. And so anyway, I, I, the, the testimony is just really powerful. People, people need to hear your story. Your story is unique. So you, we started talking and you gave us some great tips in the last session. What goes into our testimony? What? Well, your testimony is really about your, your three aspects. Your life before, the, the account, what took place when you came to know Christ, and what your life is like since you've come to know Christ. Now, those, those are the three elements. Probably no better example. Let me just um, say, yeah. for the person listening to this, I want to encourage you to write those three things down. Give them to it real quickly. Right, your again. life before. Your life before. Uh, how you came to know Christ. So how you came to know Christ, number two. It, and, the, and the third part is what your life is like since. What your life is like since. Okay, those three things. All right, go ahead. And, and the perfect example of that and, and the model for us is found in Acts 22 when Paul gives his testimony. And, and you, you'll find there that in verses 3 through 5, Paul describes uh, his life before Christ. Okay. And, and, and you can read all that fast. We don't have time in this to do it. And then, he, then, he, then beginning with verse, verse 6, he, he describes how he came to know Christ. Okay. And, and, then, and then in verse 14, he describes some, some of his change. Not everything, of course, and that's the way your testimony will. You don't describe everything, but you describe some things about how Christ has changed you. Now, uh, let, let me give you some, some hints on when you start writing your testimony. If you'll write, uh, uh, my life before, come down a little bit, just on eight and a half by 11, and come down and, and then the second thing. Just a regular sheet of paper. Regular sheet of paper. Uh, how I came to know Christ, leave a spot for that, and then come down and my life since I've come to Christ. All right, you've got those three things, and you remember you want to try to keep it brief, but here's some things the questions you may want to ask yourself when you're writing down each one of these sections. For instance, my life before Christ. You may include that you were you were lonely. That may be be part of it. That you lacked purpose. For me, that was a large part of it. I, I was uh, about to graduate from high school. I was in my senior year. I did not know. Fixing to start my senior year, I didn't have a clue in the world what I really wanted to do in life. And and there was a sense of for me too of a fear of dying. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I never came close to dying, but for some reason that, that just gripped my heart. I would pray a little prayer. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Mm -hmm. And that haunted me every night. And I just about had to die to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But uh, it may be that. It may be a hopelessness. It may be a lack of peace. It may be uh, depression. It could be any of those things that were a part of your life before you came to Christ that are symptoms of the void that is in your life that everybody has. And, and let me just say that because we were talking uh, earlier about people who, uh, you say, I was just a, a child when I came to know Christ, so my life before Christ really isn't that exciting. The, the deal is not how exciting or how bad or whatever it is, it's, it's that void that you're talking about. That's right. And uh, Renee, our, my daughter, uh, I remember she was just a, a small child, and my associate pastor of the church where I was at, his daughter died. And it just 
gripped her as a young child. And she's in, in, in our family devotional time. She said, Daddy, I, and she drew out something, and she had a gap between God and man, and, and she says, I'm over here. And, yeah. and, you know, she was, she, that was what gripped her. And, and so she was just a small child. And, and so it, it, it it's not any big dramatic thing, bad thing that you've done. It's just that emptiness, that separation, whatever it is. Now, it, it could be that, and I didn't mention it there, but it could be that, 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 that the person was a, an addict, uh, an alcoholic, uh, it, 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 whatever. It is. And he, he, might, he would want to include that because the very person that he might be talking to might be a person that's like that and thinks there's no hope for him. When I was in Egypt, we had testimony from Egyptians who came to Jesus, and it was really exciting because one of them, I was on the verge of suicide, one I went through a divorce, one, uh, you know, I had no hope in life. It was the same things that I would have heard in the United States, just the very yeah. basic same right. things that, right. that, that uh, you know, we, we experience, all people experience, yeah, and those people. are the things we're looking for. Right. Okay, what else? Uh, the second, the second that you answer, you answer those questions, whatever it may be that relates to you. Then you come down to the second part where it says, how I came to know Christ. Well, was it through the witness of somebody, somebody who shared with you consistently and and one on one uh, or friendship, and over a period of time, was it that you were at a, at a church service of some kind and you heard the gospel for the first time. It may have been through a television broadcast. It right. could have been any number of things. Somebody may have given you a Mark New Testament, given you a track. You read that and I've seen that happen over and over to people and they read that and God's Spirit convicted him. But whatever whatever brought you to that the, point. Those, those things that God used yes. to bring you to that point. Okay. Yeah, that's what you want to emphasize in that, that second section. You yeah. know. Now the third section, you come to the point where, where well, what has your life been like since? What is the change in your life? I think sometimes it's good to go back. If, for instance, if if you if you have this fear of dying, for instance, like you said, Renee, and like, like I had, uh, I, I can honestly say when I say one of the ways that he changed my life is is my wife can tell you to this day that when I lay my head on a pillow at night, I don't I don't wrestle. I, I go sound asleep. It's not like I was because I know where I'm headed, not because of my goodness, but because of Christ's mercy and his grace in my life. I know that if I die, I'd go to heaven. So I've got that wonderful assurance. And uh, that's part of, of my testimony about, about what's happened to me. So you can relate back to the section one. Here's where I was. I was lonely, but now I'm not lonely. But be specific, whatever it is on your life, what he's done for you since. One, one thing that I feel like I need to bring out and go back to point number two, and that is how you came to Christ. Sometimes we get stuck on the method rather than the actual salvation experience. That's right. And we need to be very, very careful that we share the, for instance, for people who grew up in the south, southern part of the United States, Often I hear them share their testimony and say, and I walk down the aisle. Well, I know what that means. I, I, I understand what that means. But walking down an aisle doesn't make you a Christian. Right. What they need to do is they need to say, and, and that day I invited Christ to come into exactly. my life and then go into the change that he's made. Exactly. So just be specific about that and, and remember the terminology. That's right. So I want to encourage you, those three things, just remember those three things. You write them down and write them out. And then I want to encourage you to pray. We talked about prayer in an earlier session. Pray that God would give you someone to share your testimony with this week. This week that you would share your testimony with someone. And God's going to give you one of those divine appointments, and he's going to use you. And then we want to hear back from you how you shared your testimony with someone.